my gosh. I, literally, Danny and I were just dancing away at our theme, our own theme music. Three year, three seasons in, it still delights us, which oh, is makes me so happy. Is good. Is good. We were both doing the little shooty guns, and Danny was going beep beep. Was I've been like, working on this dance. You know, like when you see like like tight ends, or like we'll catch like a twenty yard pass, yeah. and they do the thing where they go. Whoo. Oh, the push down. <laughs> the LeBron. James I've been practicing yeah. that at home. That's a good one. So That's I brought good. it out today. I like. It. But let's you know, let's get into this the right way, everybody. Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to the Christmas Countdown Show. My name is Eric Peterson. I'm here with my good buddy, Danny Jordan. We got John Ewing live in the Ewing. building. He's back. We got Chris Sisley live in Brooklyn. We're all together, folks. It is Christmas time. It, it is, is truly Christmas it time. It is so Christmas. We are right in the, the trenches of the good stuff. It's cold. It's cold out here. I was just in New York. Yes. And like experiencing the Christmas vibe, which we'll get into a little bit later Amazing. in this episode. But it was like yesterday was like super chilly yeah. in New York and the wind was blowing. And I you could just it smelled like Christmas. Yeah in the air and there was like this guy like jingling a bell near oh, my so hotel good. and i was like this is christmas this is it yeah. new york um the other night after my show here in la yeah. we were walking back to the uh, after the opening night we were walking back to our car in the parking garage and there's like a little side door that we have a pass to and so like we can get to the cars a little faster yeah. and by that side door there's like a little alcove and uh and when we walked past it, it smelled like pee like Clearly, people had peed in that little corner. And as we walked past it, I was, was kind of like, Ugh. and Sophie goes, oh, it smells like New York. <laughs> and like, she really was like, she was excited about it. I was like, the smell of human pee on the side of a building. And she's like, yeah, I know it doesn't smell great, but it makes me think of New York. Isn't and I was it like, wild? I, I had the same feeling whenever I walk by like that smell sure. i go oh new york new or york like every time some of my neighbor who you know lives next door to me he smokes a lot of cigarettes yeah. and like whenever i go out in the morning to like let the dog out or whatever at like 6 45 yeah. he's already in the backyard and i go oh reminds me of my childhood at the racetrack <laughs> like, i immediately get transported like back oh, to santa anita racetrack where my grandfather would take when yeah. smoking indoors was still illegal yeah and i can remember like walking into like indoor section where all like the like the bedding stations yeah. are and you would just look and it was just like a haze a fog yeah of smoke yeah and nobody thought twice about it no, no um way. anyway since since memory we have figured we have figured some things out as a society but um yeah. yeah we got a lot of stuff to talk about we got fan mail to open we got reviews to read we got a game coming we got some check-in stuff we both like uh, you were just saying we've both opened shows yes so we can talk about that your trip to new york my show is now officially open i made it through our first week of shows and it was intense um <laughs> let's start with you how was new york how was uh the broadway opening mr producer oh my gosh it was incredible yeah. i the word i keep using to describe it is like it was electric i mean you've been a part of you know multiple opening nights uh on broadway and obviously with your show here locally and um it was electric like i think you know you never forget like your first show yeah. um that you're a part of and like my, I had some friends texting me yesterday and they're like, so how, or my brother was texting me. He goes, how do you feel? You must be like so proud of yourself. And I was like, I think I'm still processing sure, yeah. all of it because there's it so much happened. going on yeah. and it's not like just going to see another Broadway show. Like there's a lot of, you know, hullabaloo that sort of surrounds it. You have the whole red carpet arrival, you're dressing nice. Plus as a producer, like I wanted to make sure I met up with my investors right. and made sure that they had a good time and that they got introduced to, you know, any celebrities or, yeah. you know, cast members. But it was wild. Like I was sitting in the Belasco Theater and I just I just had this flashback. Um, and I went and looked this picture up recently of when I saw Mary Poppins for the first time on Broadway. I had this picture of me standing at the New Amsterdam, like right after the show in front of like the drop. And I just had this big smile on yeah. my face. And I was like, how wild that 15 years ago, I sat in a Broadway theater and thought, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. I, want, I don't know what the journey is going to look like. And frankly, I could have never predicted what's happened. But it was like all of the moments that like sort of like, you know, cornerstone moments, milestone moments, all like flashed in front of my eyes, all yeah. the meetings, all the, the lunches, the, the failures, the successes. And I was like, it all led me here and how beautiful of a story. Uh, it is. And I was just filled with with gratitude. And, you know, it was a successful opening. Um, 
I'm sure you're used to this from doing opening nights is that it's, it's a mixture of energy in the theater because like everyone's super excited. Yeah. And it's sort of like as a sports team when you play for your home team because like everyone in the audience is rooting yes. for you because yeah. it's the producers, it's the investors, it's industry folk. Yeah. Um, but what was interesting was like all of us in the orchestra had pretty much seen the show before. Sure. But like all the people in the mezzanine and the balcony were, we're investors. We're seeing it for the first time. Yeah. Seeing it. And so like it was interesting to hear all this noise coming from up above yeah, yeah. and realizing that like they were getting it. Like they yeah. were laughing at the moments that all of us found funny and there was a standing ovation in the middle you, of the show. It was wild. It's funny you say that. That's one of the things that I think regular civilians don't think about, but that we as either the actors or the directors or producers, something that we're constantly searching for is that we, we use this phrase, they're with us, mm. right? And like you want an audience to just feel with you. Do you want an audience that's laughing hysterically and going crazy and giving huge applause? Yes, but the main thing you want is you want them to laugh at the right parts, yep. to feel emotional at the right parts and like really follow the story. And so if you have an audience like that, you're you're golden. Yeah, the audience was with them. I'm, I'm sure you've experienced this in shows and it's not super common, but like, you know, standing ovation at the end of the show, yeah. pretty common, you know, if, if people are really enjoying, especially an opening night. Sure. But like our 11 o'clock number, yeah. when uh, Liam Pierce, who sings Building Momentum, which is like, you all should go look yeah. it up. It's a great, great it's song. a fantastic yeah. song. Um, and when the music started for the show, everyone started clapping in the audience. Yeah. And then when he hit his big swelling note at the end, it was like everyone rocketed That's awesome. out of their seats. And like, it was funny because one of my investors, I think he snuck down and got himself a better seat because the investors are typically yeah. in the mezzanine in the balcony. I stood up and I'm looking down in the front row center and I see one of my investors <laughs> and he's down there like throwing his hands up, like trying to get like, everyone out. People. He's like hyping people up. I was like, look at you. It That's was funny. It was a super cool moment. And it was just, um, I think for anyone out there uh, who has like a dream, you know, whatever that dream is, you know, we want things to happen now, but I'm so grateful that it took the time that it did because I was sitting in that room last night with so many friends yeah. and colleagues that I made along the way. And or I guess it wasn't last night, two nights ago, whatever it was. Uh, I was sitting in that theater and I just had this deep sense of gratitude for the journey. You know, we've talked about on the show before. It's like, don't just think about like the outcome, you yeah. know, like celebrate the journey. And it was one of those moments where I really got to sort of like celebrate the last 15 years of like determination yeah. and courage and all these sorts of things. So if you guys are in New York um, or you have friends or family that are traveling to New York, please have them go check out How to Dance uh, in Ohio. Uh, you can look up Ohio Musical on all the social media platforms uh, or just go to How to Dance in Ohio. I think it's How to Dance in Ohio Musical dot com or just google it and you can get some get some tickets we got some great deals going on right now it was great and then you opened a show too Whew, yeah like opening night central yeah there. it was uh my kids had opening nights lisa had opening nights i had opening nights you had opening nights um yeah the show uh christmas story at the amundsen uh christmas story the musical is officially open now we've gotten through our first eight week or eight shows a week wow. uh did a five show weekend which was pretty intense uh we did uh i was just telling danny before we started recording that old eric here is on working on fumes <laughs> as you could tell by my searching for words basically we did a five show weekend so that's a show on friday two shows saturday two shows sunday oh gosh came home sunday night already wiped and i stayed up till five in the morning i haven't stayed up that late in a long time yeah. five in the morning like putting up more lights getting our house ready because we do a christmas party that we had on monday so i had like four hours of sleep on monday and then <laughs> had the party preparations all day monday um, and now we're back into another week of shows. So yeah. uh, it's good. The audiences have been loving it. They've really been um, responding great. You know, they're very full houses, which is great. We love to see that. The cast is doing good. We had our first couple people call out, and we were able to manage it with, you know, swings and stuff. So it's going good. The show's well, great because I you. went uh, last week. Yeah. And I went with my mom, and she was just having – an absolute blast and yeah. you were so kind to chat with us for a little while you know backstage afterwards and you know your number major award like 
brought down the house. I, I was telling Eric uh, after the show, there was a guy who was sitting to my my right, and like every joke that Eric had in the show, he was just with um, Eric, and like I could hear people talking behind us. They're like, "Oh yeah, I remember watching him on Kevin can F himself. Yeah. He's so great." And just you were so dialed in, man. Thanks, you man. did an absolutely phenomenal job. I appreciate and I that. Had an, had an absolute blast. Um, I'll tell you a funny thing that happened on opening night. Okay. Woo! Okay, this was theater, true theater, a theater moment. Oh, I love it. Um, okay, so everybody knows there's the leg lamp, right? right? And everybody knows, spoiler alert, that the leg lamp gets broken, yes. right? There was a mishap in our props department. Okay. And we were in the scene where I come in and I'm like, oh, yeah, the Bears are going to start bull holds this week. And it's supposed to be that uh, Ralphie's just gotten into a fight and he's lost his glasses, but mom kind of covers for him. And right. it's like a sweet moment about that, right? Um, as I went to walk into the room from the outside, yeah, just walking past the leg lamp, it was so fragile because the one that breaks is like already pre-broken, but then it kind of stays together with magnets gotcha. and stuff. Okay. It fell off the radio and shattered. Oh my gosh. In, into its three pieces, but like clearly broke, clearly fell off. No, nobody had touched it. It was just walking past it. But this is now three scenes before that's supposed to happen. Oh my gosh. And it's like a major plot point. Yes. And it's opening night. And we were, we all just froze. The audience kind of went, oh. <gasps> They kind of giggled a little bit, but they could tell that it was not supposed to happen. Right. I consider myself a pretty competent improviser. Yes. And like I enjoy when something goes wrong on stage and finding a way to like figure it out and solve the problem. Totally. I truly was like, I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I am I, I'm like, do I just jump to that scene where I'm like, you were always jealous of that lamp? Yeah. But I was like, but then we miss the Higby's number. There's like right. a bunch of stuff. And I was like, I can't make that call to just like cut there were you know, 30 minutes, 12 ahead minutes out of the show or something. <laughs> and so I'm like looking at it and I look at Sabrina uh, Sloan, who's playing my wife. And we're both just like, uh, uh, and then I think it was um, Henry Witcher, the kid who plays uh, Randy, who's eight years old, nine years old. He's so great. He like kind of said something about like, we could fix it or something like that. And then I was, I looked at Sabrina and I go, you're going to fix that. Right. And she goes, yep. And then we just <laughs> went, went on with the scene and it just laid there broken. <laughs> and then when we got up to the scene where it was supposed to break, we were like, what broke? And the audience, <laughs> and the audience was, was like, like yeah. So they were with us and it was, but Oh my gosh, I oh, truly was man. like, I don't know how to solve this problem. That is a major plot yeah. point way too early in the it's show. It's not like a mustache falling off. No, no, Where no, no, you no. can just yeah. be like, why is my fish Whatever. falling yeah. out? It's like I a must plot be stressed. point. <laughs> yeah. And like, and most people who know the musical or at least know the movie, yes. they know that that doesn't happen yes. yet. Yes. Wow, but how, how amazing that Henry, <laughs> like amazing. as you were sharing with me when we were down there, you know, recording yeah. that a lot of the kids who were in the show, they've done a lot of professional yeah. theater, but like this is his first yeah. big, big thing, professional yeah. gig that he was yeah. the he one was ready. who was just like He was ready. like, I got something. It was crazy. That, but that's it the was best part now. about live theater is yes. you never know what's going to happen and you got to figure it out. And I think like after the show, I definitely had – not a full like that was amazing. I had like a sense of like I can't believe the leg broke. Like I was I was a little bummed about right. that. Like even after the show was over, even though audience loved it, you know, standing ovation, all that stuff. I was kind of feeling that. But then once I started talking to people who had come to see the show, they were like, "We loved that. It was great. We liked seeing you like have to figure it out." Like and so I was like, "Okay, I'm I'm not going to feel as bad about it." Right. Hearing that the audience was sort of digging what was happening. Yeah. But even Sabrina told me, she said afterwards, she was like, I could see in your eyes that you were like, maybe thinking of jumping to that scene. Mm. And I was going to go with you, but I was like, also thinking like, I don't know if we can do that. And then I saw you kind of realize, <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. And this is all non-verbally just right. like looking at each other. But like in your mind, how much time do you think passed before something was said? Yeah. Uh, what actually was, was probably seven seconds maybe 10 seconds right but in your it mind it felt like three minutes yeah it felt like me going <laughs> somebody got up went to the bathroom yeah, they're mean, like he still hasn't figured it he out hasn't figured it out <laughs> so yeah it probably was much shorter than it felt like but it feels like eternity 
yeah. being like you start to hear the buzz of the lights and you're yeah. like people are waiting for something to happen yeah. here yeah. oh man but that's that's the beauty of live theater and that's i it think was. that's part of why people go to live theater yeah it's sort of like saturday night live you're yeah. like you want to see them break a little you want to see a moment where somebody does something a little bit different and somebody laughs as, yeah. I, as much as we're constantly striving for honesty in yeah. our performances and the way things are written and we're always trying to be as real as possible so it feels real there's always a certain veneer that is there and when you have a moment like that either on snl somebody's yep. breaking or you know a leg is breaking that's when the audience really feels like Ooh, it's like an instant like jolt of electricity that everybody's yes. like whoa okay we are really in a moment presently together do you think that gonna- happens more now do you think we're more aware of that now because i'm getting philosophical here because for me sometimes you know social media news whatever it is you i feel like i constantly have this guard up of like is that really the story sure yeah or is that really the full story so maybe moments like that that are great that we've enjoyed for a long time hit so much bigger because like wow yeah that really just yeah happened there was no this wasn't a planned prank or something right. on tiktok that looks like it just happened like it really just happened yeah yeah i think you're right speaking of pranks i just have to ask you this yes are you one for closing night pranks no you're not okay no it, what i don't even know i've never even heard of that as a thing done, maybe that's just a community theater <laughs> closing night pranks yeah because you're like well this is the last show oh god but no. it's not like like super big pranks it's just yeah. a little i did it to my brother on closing night, uh, and we chatted about this with uh, Michael James, yeah. who, was, who was in your cast as we did the best little you know chicken ranch yeah. in uh, yeah. Texas together. And there was a scene that I was in with my brother, and at the top of the scene, I'm off stage, and he's sitting at like the counter having like a about an apple juice, or, yeah. or he's supposed to be having a beer, but it looks like it's sure. apple juice. Well, I went out and bought a little bottle of tequila. <laughs> And so I filled like half of the glass with tequila <laughs> and then the rest with apple juice. Okay. But I went a little aggressive on the tequila. Sure. Like I could smell it in the wings. <laughs> and so when the set piece walks out and he sits down, I he's looking into the wings. Yeah. And I know that he always takes a sip. Yeah. And he's looking at me and I'm like, come on. <laughs> just do, do it. it. And he puts it up to his lips like very, very slowly. Yeah. Just a little, just a little prank. Yeah. So you've never no. done that before? No, definitely okay. not. <laughs> Definitely not. So I will not be doing that on our finale. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's definitely, there are pranky stuff like that. Not quite like that. But like there's, there are games that are played amongst Broadway casts. Okay. Um, Broadway casts. I don't know why I said Kiosk. it like that. Broadway casts. Um, like we would do, sometimes we would do same arm, same leg Sunday. What's so <laughs> at some point in the show, you have to walk with you you know how when you walk usually if you take a it's step alternate, on your left yeah. but your right arm yeah. kind of moves forward and that's the natural way to walk but we would do you know like you have to take a step with your right hand, leg and your arm moves at the same time and it's just a very awkward way to walk <laughs> and so you'd put it in like a scene that you could sort of hide it it would be yeah. like one or two steps but like i think i did it with shrek with haven it was like where i'm about to say like i love you and it's like a really like the pinnacle of the show yes, 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 and yes. i just walked towards her and was like I love you. <laughs> and everybody was like, oh my gosh. And they were trying not to laugh. So we'll do That's stuff like amazing. that. But Oh, I love that so much. Okay. So no closing. No, no closing. Uh, speaking of, we do have our finale coming yes. up uh, a week from today. Oh my gosh. Which is wild. Um, and we do have a lot of special, special uh, guests. I was going to say yeah. special uh, guests. Uh, special guests lined up for that episode. So make sure you come back next Thursday, which is what? Is that the 20... 22nd? That sounds right. I think so. Yeah, 22nd. Yeah. Um, should we tease some of the guests or maybe just save it for Let's the make it. them come Let's back? Let's save it, yeah. Um, obviously, this has been a blast this season. I can't believe we're already at the finale. It's, it is um, crazy. It's kind of wild. Yeah. This one has felt faster than any other season we've done. Do you think that's because you're also, you've yes. been rehearsing? Yes. And, yeah. Because it's just been, I feel like I've been pedal to the metal. Same. For Two and a half months. I said to my wife the other day before I was getting ready to leave for New York, and she goes, "How are you feeling?" I was like, "I was like, I feel like I'm getting really close to being able to catch my breath." Yeah, because you know, with our show, which I have a blast doing, plus Ohio and yeah. Disney Countdown, all the things we have, there's yeah. just a lot yeah. going on. So yeah. uh, even John, you know, who's here, he's like, he goes, "I bet you just feel like you're really in the Christmas spirit." And I yeah. was like, I said, I feel like I'm so focused on so much other stuff. Yeah 
that I haven't been able to sink in. So, so I'm excited, you know, yeah. to, to be able to just have a few days a week to spend with my family and really get into uh, the vibe. Um, but there's one thing we forgot to do at the top of the episode, Eric. Our socials. Our socials. Yes. People, yeah. follow us on the socials. You can follow us at, at Christmas Countdown Show on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. Uh, and you can go to youtube.com slash countdown network to watch all the episodes on YouTube, which is great. Yeah. And if you um, love what you're hearing. Yeah, yeah, Patreon. Uh, Patreon, you know, we've had a lot of people who've been joining up uh, recently who want to get access to all of our bonus episodes. Uh, plus, um, you also get invites to special uh, Patreon only events like our finale, which we're recording uh, next week. Yeah. Uh, all those people are going to get to be there sort of live in a virtual it. studio. Yeah. You know, hanging out with us, they're going to get to see all the guests that are coming in. So if you want access to that, you still have a few days uh, to join up our Patreon before we record that episode on the 19th, which will release on the 22nd. So just uh, click the link in the episode notes or go to patreon.com uh, slash Christmas Countdown Show. Or if you just want bonus episodes, you can do that on Apple and Spotify. And if you love what you're hearing, please make sure to rate and review uh, the show. We just, we love those ratings. We love those reviews so much. Uh, and Speaking we actually- Speaking of rating yeah. and reviewing. <laughs> yes, this was an, an email that yeah. came to us. Yeah. Uh, do you want to read it or you want me to read it? Uh, I can, let me just, if you want to read it, let me say why I wrote okay. what I wrote at All the right. top here. Yes. Um, this is an email from a Gen Xer, LOL. Um, and I put that specifically because the person wanted to remain anonymous. Sure. Um, and they said, can you just call me a Gen Xer? Okay, that's fair. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. fair. Because <laughs> they, they must be a listener because they've seen how we have just obliterated people's <laughs> screen names. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, so it says, hey, Eric and Danny, I'm not much of a contact strangers from the internet person. <laughs> that's all in quotes. But I wanted to share a few things you may have Chris missed that I think you'd enjoy in case you're interested. Mm. The 1984 made-for-TV made, made for TV movie, The Night They Saved Christmas. Mm. This is my family's It's a Cow Christmas. <laughs> it's a holiday staple for us, and it seems nobody else has heard of it. It's so good. Have you heard of it? I have not heard of that. Neither have I. Chris, have you heard of it? I have heard of it, yeah. You have? Have you seen it? Uh, it's been a very long time, but I did see it a long time ago, yeah. Okay. John, have you heard of it? No. All okay. right. We'll have, right, we'll have to check it out. I'll tell you, I was uh, at my party last night and I introduced Cow Christmas to a, a gaggle of people. Oh, that's and they amazing. were all like, This is so good. Did you I play was the like, whole yeah. album? No, I just played a couple little <laughs> select snippets. Okay, continuing on with Gen Xer's uh, email here. Yes. Uh, if you can find it, YouTube, the 1985 Andy Williams Christmas special. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Lots of nostalgia to see all the young guest stars from 80 shows. Oh, from 80s shows. Yes. Was this the one, Chris, that you just. Did I know you did like a live watch party with a bunch of the Patreon people? We did. We did a live watch party last weekend. Uh, we watched the 1966 Andy Williams Christmas oh, okay. show, but maybe the next one we do will be the 85. Nice. I'm looking for ones to do, so maybe we'll do that one. Love it. Um, Almost Christmas. Found this movie a few years ago, and it's a much, must watch for me now. Which one is Almost Christmas? I don't know. Is that anim an animated one? I. It just makes me think of Almost Famous. Look up Almost Christmas. I'm going to look it up. Maybe Kate Hudson's in it. Almost Christmas. It's a 2016 film. Does that look familiar to you? It's a bunch of people oh, in okay, Christmas yes. sweaters. Yes, I remember. I didn't see it, but I Danny remember. Danny Glover's that. in it. Omar Epps is in it. Uh, yeah. Gabrielle Union. It's a JB big family Smoove. Christmas movie. Oh, I gotta check that one out. Okay, great. We love that. We, he's got a bunch of stuff here. He, she, I don't know who it is, but they got a bunch they, of great stuff. Yeah. Here. <laughs> um. Then they have the Roger Whittaker Christmas album. Mama Mary and Hallelujah, It's Christmas are my favorites. Okay. okay. Roger Whitaker, we'll have to check that check out. Check it out. Amy Grant's Christmas album, which is true. I don't think we give enough or any love to Amy Grant. I don't think we've Who ever sh shouted her out on the show we ever. We love Amy yeah. Grant. She's so good. Um, don't think she's made any of your lists unless I'm mistaken, but you're, I think they you're are 100% correct. correct. Yeah. Uh, and finally, the book, The Best Christmas Pageant Ever. I love that book uh, by Barbara Roberts. Barbara Robinson for the younger kids. We read this every we read this every year growing up. Hope the holidays are happy and healthy for you and your families. And if you happen to want to share any of this on your podcast, I'm sure you could tell by my suggestions that I'm fully Gen X and am more than happy prefer to stay anonymous. 
<laughs> I love that. Best Christmas pageant ever. Do you know that book? No. Oh my God. It's I so good. It. It's about uh there's like a little town. Okay. They're putting on their Christmas pageant. And there's like one family that we'll call them the Smiths. I don't remember what their family name is. Okay. And they live on like the wrong side of the tracks. And they're just like their kids are dirty and they cuss and they break things and they steal stuff from the convenience store. And they're they're just like everybody's like, oh, the Smiths. They're the worst, <laughs> right? And they, I think because they're in the school, they have to be a part of the Christmas pageant. Mm. And everybody's like, oh, the Smiths are going to ruin it. They're going to ruin it. Yeah. And then like one of the Smiths, the little girl who's like really the tomboy and is like really rough and tough and everything, she gets cast as Mary. Oh. And they see her like holding the baby Jesus and she like calms down and she gets really like soft and, and gentle with it. And it's yeah. it's a great, great I gotta book. got to check it out. I think they made is a it, movie of it as well. Is it have a red does it have a red cover is it uh, this oh yeah barbara robinson there it is yeah. uh, it's on audible there you go i'll have to check it out maybe i'll try to pick it up and read it for my kids because that's one thing we haven't done a lot and i know we get this like request on instagram and through email a lot is people want us to do a countdown of christmas books yeah and we've never done it so maybe we should like make that a mission for next season i think the reason i've always like sort of steered it away from it is that i haven't read a lot of christmas specific sure. books other than Toes and Night for Christmas, some some of those, maybe Peppa's yep. Christmas book or whatever. Um, but maybe between now and next Christmas, we can like, I don't know, maybe we'll ask the Patreon people for yeah. like lists Send of us their recommendations. favorite. Yeah. And then you and I can spend the next year like that. Paul Campbell, I love uh, that. just yeah. reading a bunch of Christmas yeah. stories. I love that. And we'll chat about it next year. By the way, it's the Herdman family. The Herdman family, yes! Mm. John knows Did you it, have to yeah. look that up or did you... Need... I, I had to look it up, but I remember reading it to one of my kids. Oh, so good. Oh, that's awesome. And liked it more than she did. Yeah. I'm going to have to pick up a copy. Uh, all right. Speaking of people who you know reach out to us and, and love to share stuff with us, we have a huge package Whoa. that came. And before we open this, I do have to mention that you know Jennifer, who sent us all those gifts. Remember, she sent a gift for the John. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no spoilies. Oh, sorry. Uh, she sent a gift for Johnny, who wasn't here That's for our true. big opening. So, John, Ooh. I'm going to try to toss this over to you oh oh look at that it fell Caught out it and what opened a, it at the same a time cool. that's a little something from one of our fans jennifer jones john spud kings is the hockey team in idaho falls which was from that movie checking it twice checking it twice did you guys get one of these two do, do they know what it looks like or do you want to show they it? did okay. they, we did yeah they we did, did we did we all got different ones yeah I, well eric and chris got the same one with like a pom-pom on top yeah and then i got a black one that looks like yours and then you got a red one yeah so that's from jennifer up in idaho much appreciate it Oh, love it. All right, so this fan mail box is massive. Packed. I, I think this is the biggest box we have ever yeah. received. And this is coming to us from our very good friend who was just a guest on the show yes. recently, Chandis. So thank you, Chandis, for this box. So we'll try to get through here uh, quickly. So first, you got to start with the card. Yeah. Here we go. Let's get a little coffee mug on it. Here it says, uh, Danny and Eric, what a fun year it has been. Uh, have a great Christmas. And thank you for having me on the show. Big smiley face. Thank you so, so much. I've been peeking into this box. Oh, there's so many there's goodies. a lot of stuff. Should we start? There's like these two little, almost like drumstick looking yeah, things. Like, these uh, candies? They look like rock candy. Ooh, but they look like peppermint. But they're peppermint. Chocolate. Oh, okay, this looks really good. But they almost like a baby's rattle almost sort of situation. It's a lot happening. Yeah. Are we going to taste them? I'm tasting this. I'm opening uh, it up right all right, now. Because you, you know them. how the, the listeners love when we eat into the microphone. I was just listening to one of those episodes with my wife the other day, and she was cracking up when we're like, and here's everyone's favorite part. <laughs> Do you bite it? Don't crack your okay, tooth, it's very, bro. It's very pepperminty. Okay. And it's hard. I just don't know how high up the, the stick goes. Right. But I'm going to try a bite. I'm nervous. Well, oh, the stick goes all the way. It goes <laughs> all the way. <laughs> the but that's really good. Is it, so is it chocolate and peppermint? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's like chocolate and chocolate fudge. Oh, that sounds delicious. I will try that uh, later after dinner. Um, all right, so speaking of sweets, there's also... I don't know what this is, but it's from a company called Primo Forno, and they're ch chocol uh, cornetto croissants. con crema. Yeah, they're like little croissants. Oh, with, my kids love chocolate-filled croissants. With chocolate inside. Yeah. Ooh. All right, we'll save these Save these for later. Thank you, yeah. Chandis. Um, all right, next up we have... Oh, 
Oh my gosh, a cornucopia material. of books here. Oh my gosh. Um, first we have, and there's a copy of each book for love you it. and for me. So there's The Night Before Christmas. Love that. Little, it's a little golden book. Oh, we those love those. The uh, then we have Bring On the Merry, um, 25 Days of Great Joy for Christmas. Amazing. And then we have Inspirational Christmas. Oh, it's a memory book. So it's a, a keepsake book. Basically, you can document five years of Christmases in one How journal. fun. So it's got all these prompts inside of it. Um, and it's from Candace Cameron Bure. Good old Candace Cameron. All the Christmas fans absolutely love, love her. She will always be DJ Tanner. Um, and then the last item are these big tins, which yeah. look amazing. So excuse me while I go away from the microphone right. to open these. Oh my gosh, they're huge. They're huge, right? So there's one for you, one for me. Says, now these are from a really cool company down in Australia. Okay. Who we engage with sometimes on social media. They're called the Christmas Market. Love that. Uh, which is a family-run business. That down is in Australia. really, really cute. So shout out for them. I don't know. This is going to be fun because I don't know if there's an ornament in each tin or if both are in one tin. Let's see. Uh, oh, there's something in here. I have paper. But it might just be paper. And paper. I got no ornament. Oh, I got an ornament. You got an ornament? Yeah. Do you have one or two? I can't tell yet. Okay. Here we go. I think it's one. It's one. Oh, this is cute. This is cute. Let me see. My family does this every year, but now we have a Christmas countdown family. Sorry, John. Uh, <laughs> it says Danny, Eric, and Chris, and it's little polar bears. Oh, my god! With some snowflakes. That is so dark. John, cute. we'll write your name on one of the little snowflakes. We'll Photoshop you in. Yeah. John, uh, we'll make you a little penguin coming up from That's the so back. That's great. We can hang that on the little garland where yeah. our show specific ornaments go. Ah, oh, that's amazing. Go right next to uh, Sea Hag and Training's uh, ornament over yeah. here. Oh my gosh. Pull that up, get a little anchor. Look That's at great. that. That looks great. And this tin really is spectacular. The tin is cool. We will definitely be storing all of our. Oh, yeah. I just love that like, we can fill these up with all the cards and ornaments Do you save that we've received. Christmas cards? Uh, me personally, no. My wife, I don't know. Maybe. I feel like I don't know. I. I'm trying to think if we do that. No. We definitely sometimes will save the envelopes so that we have people's mailing address. Yes. But I will I just rip the corners the off yeah, of yeah. them. Now, do you say, or when you say cards, are we talking about like cards that like, you know, Merry Christmas from the Johnsons or, or yeah, are you just any card in general? I'm saying like when you get like the, the family Christmas yeah, the card. Family. Yeah. Or the letters. It's like, look at all the cool things we've done yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we save those, but I, I know I personally will save like, cards from my wife or yeah. cards from my kids yeah, like yeah. i just i have a drawer next to my Me bed too. that's yeah. literally just like filled with filled father's with day cards yeah, yeah and my kids love it because they like to give me silly cards and sure. so like they'll open the one that's like the minions giggling or whatever it is yeah. um so i think i save it you know for them just as much as i save it for me I love but that. um Thank you so much, Chandis, yeah. uh, for that gift. If you want to send us a little something, which I know a lot of people have been reaching out for the address, uh, you maybe got a couple days left to do that because we record our last episode on the 22nd. Yeah. So you'll, if you hear this on the uh, 14th, or we record our last episode on the 19th. Yeah. So if you hear this on the 14th, you got to get it, got to get it in quick. Um, uh, but if you want to mail stuff to us, you can reach out to us at Kringle at ChristmasCountdownShow.com or you can DM us on Instagram and we'll share the PO box with you. And I like the idea because I know there's been more stuff coming because I was at yeah. the post office earlier. Um, maybe maybe we'll just save it and do like a big mass big, opening. Yeah, on like the Christmas finale. morning. Yeah, and we'll just fill the studio with I wrapping paper and stuff. That'd be a... Uh, Super, super fun. Um, Chandis, thank you so, so much for all the goodies. Yes. Um, our hearts are full right now. If you want to mail stuff to us, you got a few more days to do that before we record our finale. So just reach out to us, Kringle at ChristmasCountdownShow.com or DM us on Instagram. Uh, we can share the PO box with you. Um, we did get one more thing in the mail. Mm. And this is coming to us from our friends at Hallmark Channel. We love them. And they sent something not just for us, Ooh, Eric, okay. but something for our wives. As they're well. they're thinking. They are thinking. They are you know, thinking. our wives. You know, Lynn, Lisa. Yep. They are so kind. You know, to <laughs> allow us to run off yeah. and do this little yeah. Christmas podcast thing, and, and they've been so supportive of us from from the beginning. It really has become like a family affair. Yeah. You know, they were they were there for the finale. Yeah. You know, season one, and they've just been huge supporters. So I think the word got back to Hallmark Channel that yeah. it might be nice to gift a little something, them something. To, to the yeah. ladies. So they actually sent us some items that are on the uh, Hallmark Channel holiday gift guide Ooh. for this year, which we haven't talked about yeah. at all uh, this season. So if you go to hallmarkchannel.com and look up their holiday gift guide, there's actually two bags for you because oh, they sent 
a kit for you and oh, Lisa and a kit amazing. for uh, Lynn and myself. Uh, if you go to hallmarkchannel.com and look up their holiday gift guide, Hallmark Channel has some amazing suggestions uh, for all the people on, on your shopping list. You know, sometimes, you know, you get to the week or two weeks before Christmas and you're like, oh my gosh, I just can't think of something. Yeah. Well, what's amazing is Hallmark Channel has got you covered. Oh, yeah. um, and specifically, they have this amazing collaboration uh, with a skincare company called Koa Life. That's K-O-A Life. Koa Life. And, you know, I I am excited about this kit specifically because I'm not kidding you. Um, right before I left for New York the other day, yeah. I had my last little pump of face lotion <laughs> nice. that, that came out. And I will say that my face is feeling a little dry because you know we go to cold sure. weather climates yeah, yeah. inevitably like my lips skin. are chapped my, my skin feels dry Ooh. um so koa hooked it up there this is like a three item kit and it comes yeah. with this like really cool very cool bag bag that would almost like, see-through yeah and it's all red and it says hallmark channel and koa life yeah um I'm super, super excited about this. So Eric, this bag, they're calling it a holiday glow up bag. Love that. That's, <laughs> Which that's I clever. Which I absolutely uh, love. And it's yeah. got three of their best selling products inside, um, which are natural anti-aging products, which, you know, once you get into your 40s. Sure. We're fighting it. We're fighting we're it, all fighting uh, it. in every way that we can. It's, uh, no longer do I have the days of like running to my local like drugstore and getting like yeah some like i don't know cheap lotion just yeah, rub yeah. on my face like i need the good stuff now and they actually have this three step skincare system which includes what do you have in yours i, think I got the same thing uh an exfoliator scrub me the right way which is funny <laughs> i have a vitamin c brightening cleanser Ooh. and then i have a fountain of youth facial oil oh my gosh now i'm always curious when i see these products i don't know if you do this when you go to like like the lotion aisle sure. at the store. I read a lot of boxes. And these ones are amazing because the benefits on them are reducing wrinkles and anti-aging botanicals. Love that. Uh, they also will help to fade dark spots for an mm. uneven complexion, which I'm definitely battling lately because sure. I think 14 years of baseball and being out in the yep. sun a ton, yep. I'm noticing some yep. of those like yep. age spots coming, which yikes. It helps to fight breakouts for clear skin, which, you know, it's holiday season. Sometimes we get stressed out. Sure. There's little breakouts. And it will leave your skin feeling hydrated. And this is my favorite word of all in this whole thing. Juicy. Juicy. <laughs> so shout out to Hallmark Channel and Koa Life. If you want to learn more about this, make sure you go to thatkoalife.com or you can go check out uh, Hallmark Channel's gift guide, which is available on hallmarkchannel.com. I'm really excited. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times when I come home from recording, yeah. you know, it's just like, Hey, here's all the fun stuff I got to do right. today and the celebrity I got to talk to but today. But today we get to bring a present home to We're the bring ladies. Bring in some merriment. So thank you, Hallmark Channel. Thank you, Koa, for this. I know our wives uh, are going to love it. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll shoot a little something of us yeah. gifting it to them yeah. and like, put it up on our Instagram stories or something. So I have a feeling I have two bags here. I have a feeling I'm not going to get either of these bags <laughs> because I'm going to give one to Lisa and I have a feeling that Sophie's going to take the other one. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, my Fortunately, my daughters are, are too young yes. for this. So if you see me in a couple weeks on camera, you're like, wow, <laughs> Danny's face definitely is looking hydrated and juicy. <laughs> You know I've been using that Koa Life. Yes. So thank you. Love Our it. Channel. Thank you, Koa. We love Very it cool. so, thank so you, much. Very cool. Thank you, Omar. All right. So... Eric, I wanted to talk about something. What? Funny. Yes, I know you were mentioning this off, I had, off camera. I had a disaster happen. Oh no! And I and I I have not even had a chance to resolve it yet. So Let me I be your therapist. I'm going to yes, be your, okay. your Christmas therapist. So I had put out, I'd say probably eighty percent of my outdoor decorations okay. prior to two days ago, okay, or a day ago. Um, everything. I had a bunch of inflatables up. I had a lot of lights out in the house. Everything was looking good. I had the you know the bushes, lights. Everything was good. Yeah. But I still had a couple things that I had not gotten to. I we have like a candy cane rope that I kind of wrap around stuff. So I put that up, and I also needed to get to the roof because I had only done like the front part of the roof. Okay. In like outlined, but I like to have like the top of the roof. Yes. The lines of the roof, you know, like I want it to look fully like, framed and like Yes, fully yep. framed. Yes. And so I went up on the roof and I added five more strings of lights okay. and I tested them all. They all did work. And I also had a little bit extra and I'd never done this before. I spelled out joy on my oh, roof. I've been wanting to do that. And I did it like for so long. You have to do it like backwards, um, at least how my string was going. I had to spell it backwards cursively. Oh, you know what I mean? right. And so I'd finished it and I was like, this is going to look so good. And then I went out at night 
None of my lights were on. Oh, my there God. There was like six of them on one thing. So it's not like there was no power coming to it. Right. So I don't know where the problem is. Was Again, it like in the middle or? I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea. But which lights were on? Like at what the point? F- f- the first ones that are going into the uh, extension cord that goes into the outlet. So like Y was lit up? No, that was... That, that wasn't why was at the end of a whole long... Oh, so that wasn't even lit up at all. No, none of it was. Oh, my god! And then we had our Christmas party, and everybody was like, oh, your house looks so great. I was like, you should see it with the lights <laughs> on the roof. And I was so frustrated. So they never came on at all? No. no. And have you tried to troubleshoot? No, because this was last night. Oh, my gosh. So I, at some point, probably tomorrow, I'm going to go up on the roof and try to figure out. Do they make like little guns that like test if there's... You electricity can, coming i know like you can do it for outlets yeah. yeah my my brother-in-law he works for socal edison so yeah. like one time i was having an issue with my outlet and he was like let me just stick this metal prong there right. like, don't do that yeah. steven <laughs> and he was like it's totally fine yeah. and, I, and i guess it's grounded in some yeah. way but it'll tell you voltage is coming through you know what i'm wondering how many strands do you have before it gets to the ones that are out it is i probably have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I probably have nine or ten strands all connected. Now, but the front half is lit. the The first strand is the only one that's lit. I think you you don't have enough amperage. So you know, some of these they'll be like connect up to five strands. Sure. I've run into this issue with the lights in the front of my house, and the bush yeah. is like I tried to run like eight across. Yeah. And the back half wouldn't light. wouldn't light. So what I did is I ran an extension cord with a splitter. Sure. And so I broke it up into thirds. Okay. So that way it wasn't because you know, basically you have like spot. Yeah. those two little small fuses at the beginning yeah. of the strand are what are needed to essentially. Yes. Now these power lights the rest. are they're the LED ones that don't need a ton of voltage. But yeah. I'm gonna try that. I wonder if you could just test like running an extension cord and just unplugging in the middle. Yeah, and, and see plugging what in what and happens. seeing what yeah. happens. That that might be the answer. Yeah. Or maybe a blue fuse. Those but no, but there's fu- something, there was power going up. If okay. they all were out, I would say that. But there was one strand that was going, so. I don't know, yeah. we have to keep us posted. I know. When you come back next week you know. for the finale, I'll, I'll let you I know, know how it got fixed or didn't. Have your but Clark I will moment. say this, what saved the day is Govi had sent us yes. um, those rope lights. And I'll, I'll be honest with you folks. We had a, a deal with Govi to yeah. talk about how great the lights were. They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they are truly spectacular. Okay, they sent us some rope lights, and I was like, okay, I'll put them up, and it'll this will be nice. They're so bright, yeah, that it like illuminates the house. So we put my or we put ours like basically it outlined the front porch of okay. my house. Now they have on their app, it connects like right away to the app on the phone, yeah, and they have like hundreds of different like preset things of like waves forest volcano christmas new year's eve and so you just press those and then the light does all these like chasing things or it changes colors oh my god but you can also set up how you want it to do if you want to design your own like light show with it it is awesome it really (laughs) like legitimately i was like i need more govi lights these are great. Right. And they're so bright. They're really, really I haven't awesome. set mine up yet. They're sitting in my garage because I've had this idea of, you know, how I like to do like little vignettes. Yeah. And I have this one area. It's like a planner where I have nothing but snowmen. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what if I just sort of like weave them around and create a look of like snow yeah. on the ground and just yeah. did like some twinkling Or you could there? even like, you could do uh, like a spiral around it. Ooh. So it was like a really big spiral and getting closer and closer until you get to the uh, snowman in the middle yeah and there's one of the things that i think is called snowflake and it's basically like blue with like white lights that kind of like trickle through it as oh like but like running gosh. lights yeah yeah Gobi, it's awesome Gobi's incredible yeah. um I, when i i think we posted something on our instagram one of my like best friends since childhood was yeah. like you're working with Govi? He's like, they have the best lights in the world. He like sent me a picture yes. of his house and it was like, he had nothing yeah. but Govi lights. And we've even had people on the Patreon who've been reaching out to us and they're like, I went out and got my Govi yeah. lights. Um, so if you haven't checked out Govi lights, uh, make sure you do. You can go to their website. You yeah. can also uh, go to Amazon. They're for sale there as well. Maybe we'll post a little link yeah. uh, in the episode yeah. notes. And they have now Christmas light kits as well yeah. so not just like the all year round lights you can get stuff that's specific for the holiday season uh as well so make sure you check that out um now before we get to the countdown i think our friend 
our game master, yes, Chris Sicily, has a little something for us. Chris, what are we doing today? We're playing a game. We're going to play a game we've played before. We're going to play it again. This one is called, well, I guess it's a backward song game, but we decided we were going to call it, uh, what is it, Sam, Sam Cirque? Sam Cirque. Yeah. Sam Cirque. Yes. It Sirk. rolls off the tongue. Sam Cirque. <laughs> <laughs> So Love this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play some uh, Christmas songs in reverse. Specifically, these songs are going to be all Christmas hymns. And even more specifically, mm. just for consistency purposes, I'm using only hymns that were recorded by the Mormon Tabernacle Choir just to keep them Whoa. all level. Okay. Um, oh, exciting. But I'm going to play the songs in reverse. You guys will take turns or figure out how you want to decide how you want to uh, answer. You're going to have to answer, though, and tell me the name of the song in, reverse. in the reverse order. That's the hardest part. I know. I know. It, makes it is me, the I'm hardest gonna, part. Let me take an extra sip of coffee to get my brain yeah. buzzing here. Yeah. Should we Should we go each other one? Like you go the first one, I'll do the second one. So there's a little less anxiety of like who's going to buzz in first. Or you you like winning this game you because know you're very good at this, Danny. You know, we've become really good friends. <laughs> and I believe in collaboration and a collaborative, supportive spirit here in the Christmas Countdown Studio. Except for in the Except game. Except for this <laughs> game. No. Uh, if you would like to do it that way, I'm happy Let's, to do Just it so way. I have a chance. Okay. Just so right. I have a chance. All right. Fair Danny enough. will do the first one. Okay. All right. So here's Watch the first song. <laughs> Remember, this is in reverse. <laughs> ding, ding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's not so easy, is it? No, this is really hard. John, do you know? I feel like we're summoning Santa. <laughs> Turn the lights down low. I have an idea. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go Silent Night. My guess was, what child is this? You're both incorrect, unfortunately. Oh, Here's the right gosh. answer. Said the night wind to the little man. Do you hear what I hear? Do you see what? Or, so the correct answer was, yeah. hear I what, hear you do. You know oh, what yeah, was hard you about this? Backwards. There's not a lot yeah. of music in the background. Sure, it's all voice. And because... What made this is so smart? What Chris has done in this game is that in like seasons past or games past with this, I know music, what Brenda Lee's sure. voice sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know these. Sure. This is oh, this is gonna be hard. Right, but I like it. That was well done. Okay. Zero for one. Here's the next one. I mean, it's got the vibe of Silent Night, but I don't think it's Silent Night. No, I don't think it is either. What song is that? It came up on a minute like there. So yeah. clear. Oh, that's a lot. Hard. Clear midnight upon came it. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's like just watching us try no. to figure out a way through. Can I hear a, a clip one more time? You sure can. Towards the middle of the clip, you can definitely hear it, if you know what it is, honestly. Yeah. It's so quiet, and it's yeah. so subtle. Yeah. It's really hard. I mean, I... It um, the end almost feels like sleep in heavenly peace. Which would be silent night. So night silent. Incorrect. Dang it. Incorrect. Oh my gosh. I wonder if anyone's listening to this like crushing it in their yeah. car. All right. Um, what was it? What was it? Here it is. Oh my gosh. That's what it was. When it yeah. was going up, it would be descending. Okay. Oh my gosh! All right, this is hard. John, did you have that one? I was thinking that, but I couldn't remember the like. It's hard to put a name 
to what to the you tune. think it yeah. could be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. These are hard. All right, give us another one, Chris. Destroying us, Chris. Next one. I, I think it's got to be, it's got to be Hall's the Deck. Hall's the Deck? That's right. Yay! Yay! Could you do from the fellow laws? laws, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you right, play so the Fala yeah. Laws in repeat in reverse one more time? Reminds me of. Oh, that was fun. We got one. That was good. Here's the next one. John, you have an idea? I was about to, you don't want to know what I was about to guess. I was about to go above the fruit plane. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. It did sound a little oh, bit. Like, yeah. John, what do you think it was? Um I'm I'm probably way off, but let me think. Uh manger. We already had that one, right? Did we already say that? We sure did. Yeah, we already had Away in the Manger. All right, I don't know. Uh, I don't know either. Here's the correct answer. I want you to do a game where you just play one second of a song, and I'm good at that. I can where it's I, actually played in the right order. Yeah, like oh, okay. play it straight, but only give me one second. I can name that tune. Yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah, I yeah. can name that in two notes. Yes, you can sort of situation. Yeah. Here's the next one. A uh, king's, king's three we. Yeah. Bass section getting all yeah. love in this one. That was good. Wow. Should we do one more? We can, we can do one more. Sure. Here we go. All right. The <laughs> Christmas, uh, Christmas Mary. <laughs> Uh, wish we? Oh, you forgot a word. Oh, there's a U. You in forgot there. a U, yeah. <laughs> I can't. My brain won't do it. <laughs> you say it if you know it. Christmas, Mary, yeah. A, U, wish we. That's correct. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I have to close my eyes when I do yeah, it. Because yeah. I look at, I try to see the words in my mind. Sure, yeah. And, and go backwards. Read backwards. Yeah. Woo! Those were good. Those were hard, Chris. That's sure a good were. like. I feel like our brains are getting stronger. Yeah. When we play games like this. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I'm curious how many people were listening to it and were crushing it and just knew it right away, or yeah, were with us and just yeah. had no idea. Let us know. Yeah. Hit us up on the on the DMs on Instagram. Let's uh, do it in the countdown. Yeah. Let's do it. All righty, folks. So we are doing, this is five through one of the top 10 Christmas carols or hymns. Yes. Uh, as a reminder, as we always do, uh, my number 10 was Carol of the Bells. And number nine, I had O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And number eight, I had Angels We Have Heard on High. At seven, I had O Come, All Ye Faithful. And at six, I had the Coventry Carol. Okay, my number five. I've talked about this song before. Okay. It's called... We light a thousand candles. Mm. It's that song that I told you about when I was growing up. Uh, our church choir on Christmas Eve would sing this carol. Yes, um, and then I remember they were in these little red books, and they were like just construction paper like books, and so they all were frayed and like breaking, and yeah. had tape on them and stuff like that. <laughs> but they'd been used year after year after year. So let's listen to just a little bit of uh, "We Light a Thousand Candles."
We light a thousand candles bright. It's so great. I, I, just, I didn't know that song till you. Yeah, it's a good one. When you're describing those books, you know what I'm also seeing on those pages? What? Little coffee stains. Oh, definitely. All those yeah, yeah. little maybe wax from a yep. candle that it dripped on there. Definitely had wax on them for sure. That's yeah. one of my favorite parts of old hymnals or just like old choir books. Yeah. It's just thinking of like, Janice from 1967, <laughs> who was trying to flip the page. Right, like, yeah. Oh, my coffee, guys. Yeah, yeah totally. And you just sweep it off. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. So that's uh, my number five. We light a thousand candles. Love it. Uh, all right. So recapping my 10 through six. Um, and I went with artist specific selections yes. for mine. So at number 10, I had In the Bleak Midwinter by Jamie Cullum. At number nine, I had Angels We Have Heard on High by Andrea Bocelli. Number eight, The First Noel by uh, those uh, old classics in sync. Uh, and number seven, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear uh, by Frank Sinatra. And then at number six, Oh, Come Let Us Adore Him by Shane and Shane. Uh, at number five, I have a song that is honestly one of the happiest songs like at the holiday season. And that's going to be Joy to the World. Good one. Um, Good specifically, one. I love the version by Phil Wickham, which is Joy to the World in parentheses, joyful joyful yeah because they do sort of like a medley where it's joyful joyful lord we adore thee sister act two sister act two when i (laughs) that is immediately where my mind gets transported anytime i hear that song is you know if you grew up in the 90s yeah you remember can i tell uh, you back in the habit a quick little story (laughs) the other day i was at a dinner party and i was talking to somebody and the subject of nuns came up. Somebody was talking about nuns. Yeah. And I like totally dead face seriously was like, Oh, I knew this nun once who, um, she was like, she was a really good singer and she like sort of had to hide at this, um, convent because she had seen like a, crime committed yeah. and then she started working with the singers and they got really good. And like the Pope came <laughs> and they were like, what? And then other people were like, he's talking about Sister Act. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're like, like Dolores Van Dolor- Cartier. <laughs> um, I love it. Those are like the two things I think of with Sister Act are Joyful, Joyful. And the one nun is like Van Cartier. Yeah. Like she yeah. says it with like that old school accent. And uh, that nun is in White Christmas. Oh, that's right. She's the secretary. That's right. We talked the, about like, that. Bell. Is that season one or season yeah. two? You brought that up. Um, well, let's take a little listen to uh, Phil Wickham's version of Joy to the World. In parentheses, joyful, joyful. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. So good. Love it. Love and I it, told love you, it. I think he goes to my church. That's right. He performs in my church a lot. Way to go. All right, that's my number five. Um, all right, my number four is The First Noel. Mm, oh, did NSYNC. you already have that on your... By NSYNC, yeah. Not by NSYNC. <laughs> Not by NSYNC. <laughs> I would go with the Frank Sinatra version. Oh, they're going to say 98 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm good. I would go with the Frank Sinatra version. Um, a little uh, backstory on The First Noel. Uh it's originally uh, Cornish, and it was spelled N O W E L L, L as opposed to N O E L. Oh, that's right. Yeah, um, and they think it came from Carol's Ancient and Modern in 1823. Wow, Whew. that's an old. That's old a few song. years ago. That's um, wait, that's 200 years ago this year. Yeah, it is. That's right. But I just love this song. I feel like it's it is religious in a less uh, overt way. Okay. Let's say is some of the other hymns or carols, which are like clearly very much talking about Jesus or something like that, you know. And I just feel like the first Noel is like I don't know. I let's listen to a little bit of Frank Sinatra, and then we'll we'll talk okay. about why it's great. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds. In fields as they lay 
He's feeling it. You can feel yeah. that he is like, he's lived a life that this song has been important mm-hmm. and that he's saying it at, you know, his Christmas 100%, Eve services, you yeah. know, which that begs the question, how great would it be to be at a Christmas Eve service and Frank Sinatra standing next to you? Oh my gosh. That'd be pretty amazing. I mean, I'd be pretty darn intimidated. Yeah. I don't know if <laughs> I'd hit your notes. I think I'd just be going, <laughs> just moving my yeah, mouth yeah. or like saying watermelon over and yeah. over again yeah. but uh yeah you get the sense like when he sings those old hymns um you i feel like you get a sense as to like that religion that yeah. he honored faith, that and yeah. that was a big part of it and i love just how simple a lot of the orchestrations are yeah. on that and you got the choirs who will come in on all of those yeah. tracks um Great selection. Thank you. Um, all right. So number four for me uh, is going to be a song that I'm guessing you probably have higher up okay. on your list. Um, and it's going to be Oh Holy Night. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to go, I'm specifically going with the Nat King Cole version. Okay. It's, it, that is a great version. Because I think you have <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> a specific version that you will be blowing yes. the roof off with yes. uh, here shortly. But uh, a little backstory on Oh Holy Night. It was originally titled uh, Cantique de Noël. Okay. I think that is French. I don't speak French, so I probably butchered that. Um, and it was originally based on a French language uh, poem by poet Placide Capot. Okay. Uh, and it was written in 1843. Uh, there's a bunch of other French language that is included in this backstory about the song. Um, but O Holy Night, it just, to me, it's one of those songs that just um, speaks to obviously the reason of the season. There's a certain amount of like, peace that I always feel whenever I hear this song. Uh, it's one of those songs that I look forward to singing, you know, at, uh, you know, during Advent or, you know, at the Christmas Eve service. It's one of those that's always a staple. Uh, and I think Nat King Cole does a phenomenal uh, rendition of it. So let's take a little listen to Nat's version of Oh Holy Night. Oh Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. So good. It's great. Just so good. And it's another one of those songs, as we chatted about in 10 through 6, that starts out with just O. Yes. But not O-H-I-O. Oh, Um, just O. But uh, yeah, O Holy Night holds a a special place in my heart, and that's why I got it at number four. I love that. Um, You will be hearing more of that song later. (laughs) Yep. My number three selection is Away in a Manger. I it's so simple. It's one of those when I think about Christmas Eve and there's all the carols that you sing or the hymns that you sing at the end of the service. That's one that a lot of times they'll do an acapella verse. And there's just something about I think about little kids being like in a Christmas pageant, being like, away in a manger. <laughs> you know, yes. it just is such a sweet song and it is it reminds you of the sweetness and the mm. the fragileness of the what we're really celebrating and singing about. Um, I also like that it is attributed to Martin Luther. They think he may be the one that wrote it. Oh wow! Because um, there, I was looking on uh, Wikipedia, you know, which is the most it's trusted, most accurate. <laughs> uh, only the like smartest, most astute people right, are yeah, allowed yeah. to write anything there. Yeah, that's right. But uh, it was under the heading Luther's Cradle Song. It was like in a published in something. Uh, in the Christian Sinisher, it's a journal. Okay. Uh, and it says, The following hymn, composed by Martin Luther for his children, is still sung by many of the German mothers to their little ones. Uh, they think it was written in 1883, I believe. Uh, and sometimes it's called the Cradle Song or Mueller. Ooh. Yeah. I love it. Do you so, have a specific version you like a lot? This one I don't. Okay. I would say I m- the way I like it best is little kids singing it badly when they say you know what I mean? the lit 
little lord like they yeah. really emphasize yes, the, the little yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's the key like i can yeah. picture like every year you know like at the christmas eve service like and now we're gonna welcome yeah. in you the know kids come up yeah the sunday school kids all come in and like everyone's got their cameras yeah. out and then they finish singing and like half the people leave yep yep <laughs> that's immediately what i picture yeah. i i wonder emerson's got her um her little sing-along that her preschool is doing at church coming up. I wonder nice. if they're going to sing that one. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, I will definitely be there with phone in hand recording, ready to go. Uh, great selection. I do like Nat King Cole's version. Yes. His, his is great. Um, all right. So for my number three, I'm going to go with a big celebratory tune. Okay. Uh, and it's so celebratory. It has an exclamation point right at the beginning. Hark. Oh, yeah. The Herald Angels sing. I like the exclamation point at the beginning. Yeah. It really gets like, your attention. You, you better be... Full speed from the get go. Don't Maybe realize we should that do that with our show, Christmas countdown like, show. I like that. Is that and we probably idea? would be higher up in like the SEO or something. Or maybe, do you think that the uh, what do you even call those? What's not a letter, but uh, uh, a character? A character. Yeah. Do you think those come after A's, or do you think those would come first? I don't know. I see a lot of people on like Spotify or whatnot when they create playlists. Yeah, they will start with an emoji. Okay. And I think somehow that bumps it that up. That bumps it up. So I've tried that recently. Yeah. It hasn't really worked for me. Okay. Um, but that is an interesting thought yeah. that if you just put an exclamation point at the beginning. Yeah. Or maybe even just for your name. Yeah. Eric yeah. Peterson. <laughs> That's right. Really get people's attention. I like that. Um, but yes, it's going to be Hark the Her- Herald, uh, Angel Sing, which is an English Christmas carol that was first um, released, at, or I guess it appeared released. It was appeared in a collection of hymns and sacred poems in 1739. Ooh, old. Um, super old. It was uh, based on uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 14, which tells of the angelic chorus singing praise to God. Um, specifically, I love pentatonics. Yeah, version of this like hawk the herald, hawk the her-. like. I just there's so many different versions that have been done yeah. of this song, and it always feels happy. It always feels celebratory, which is what the holiday season is all about. Yeah. It's the celebration of you know sort of redemption of birth of new life of joy of I don't know hope hope and peace and all the things and to me hark the herald angels sing uh glory to the newborn king like it just it captures captures that vibe and the celebratory nature of the season I think my favorite version of that is when the angels from heaven sing it I don't That's know if you've heard that. I don't version. know if you've heard that version, but it's pretty good. I hear it whenever I walk into a room, you know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so good. Um very very good, very strong. Um okay, my number 2 is Oh Holy Night. Yeah. Can you believe it's I thought two? it was going to be number 1. It almost was. Number 1 though is No, I know what you're doing. No, I Are am you not doing it again. I am not doing Hallelujah okay. chorus. I thought about it. I thought about it, but I am not doing Hallelujah chorus. Uh, um, no, Oh Holy Night. I've talked about this song ad nauseum yeah. on this show, so I'm not going to say much. I'd rather use my time to have um, Chris play the David Phelps version of Oh Holy Night, the greatest singing performance maybe of all time. Check this out. It's pretty dark. If you've never heard this, check this out. Did that change your life? I bet it did. Because it changed my life when I heard it. And I love every season. And even if I'm like, that's one of the songs that I will listen to in the middle of the year. If I'm like, I'm missing Christmas. Boom. Oh, Holy Night, David Phelps on YouTube. Dude, you introduced us to that season one. Oh, so good. And 
absolutely blew my mind. I think it was one of your top 10 songs of all time. Yeah. I think it came in at like number three yeah. or number two, because obviously you had, you had Darlene Love, yeah. Christmas Baby, Please yeah. Come Home. But I, you were like, let me play this for you. And I just remember, because remember season one, like we didn't have anywhere to yeah. be. You were like, let's just sit here and listen to the yeah. full four minute version yeah. of every single song, because we're sitting in our garages. Uh, but yeah, I, I love it. I still go back and listen to it yeah. to this day. His version is like no other. And I was like, I can't mention it because I had a feeling yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah. Um, you. Great selection. Uh, and number two, I'm going to go with uh, Do You Hear What I Hear? Mm, Specifically, one. the version by For King and Country, who you mm -hmm. mentioned earlier yeah. uh, in the countdown at 10 through 6. Um, I love this band so, so much. There is an, an epic nature to the arrangements of their songs, to the instruments that they use on their songs, to the performance. I love that on their their holiday album, which if you have not listened to, just start it at the beginning. There's like a prologue at the beginning and then take it all the way through to the end. Um, I love that they'll talk in the middle of some of their songs. Yeah. Like in Little Drummer Boy, they talk in the middle. And it if you grew up going to church, it feels a lot like a church service yeah. at points where like you'll be in the middle of a song and then like the you know worship leader or whatever will be like and you know and that's what god said he would yeah. do and blah 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 and it really like helps to center you in what the song is all about yeah and i mean i was just in new york as we were chatting about earlier and i every morning while i was getting ready i just kept putting this album on to sort of like get me into the right headspace for the holiday season, the right headspace for this sense of gratitude for this, you know, life goal that was coming true. So do yourself a favor, put on for King and Country's Christmas album and and definitely listen to Do You Hear What I Hear? Because it is just an amazing arrangement, amazing performance. Let's let's take a little listen to it right now. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song High above the trees With a voice as big as the sea With a voice as big as the sea Right, everything about yeah. What have they you ever do. seen them in concert? I have not. I had a um, my uncle went. He said it was awesome. They're on tour right now, yeah. I think, because someone I know from like community theater here in town. She was like, "For King and Country." I was like, "Wait, yeah, they're playing here, and I'm in yeah. New York." Dang it! Oh man, it was like Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, she's at For King and Country, <laughs> and I'm in New York. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's my number two. I love it. Very strong. Um, all right, my number one. I think we may have the same number one. I don't know if you've mentioned this yet. Did we do it? Say it on three. One, One two, two, three. three. We silent wish you a night. Merry Christmas. No. <laughs> Wait, what is yours? It's Silent okay, Night. Okay, Silent yeah. Night. Okay, yes. So we both have Silent Night. Yes. Um, I'll give you a little uh, backstory here. I like that in German it's called Stil Nacht. Nacht. Stil I love, Nacht. I love the word Nacht. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Um, written by Franz Xavier Gruber mm. with lyrics by Joseph Moore in the small town of Obendorf bei Salzburg, Austria. Okay. In 1818. Oof. I just think that if we're talking hymns and carols, yeah. nothing is better or more succinct or more beautiful and precious. And obviously most people feel that way. It's said that it's the most performed Christmas song of all oh, time. Really? Yep. Um, I think it said there was like 170,000 uh, recorded versions wow. of it. Yeah. Um, so we should do a Silent Night countdown. Our favorite Silent Night yeah, versions. Yeah, it would be a very mellow. It would be a very mellow very episode. Mellow yeah. yeah. Um, you could talk a little bit as well about it. I just yeah. think it's so great. I love it. It it makes me think of Christmas Eve midnight service yeah. at my church. Yeah. Um, you know, you start the service at 11. If you time it out right at midnight... You sing Silent Night, and everyone, they, they bring the lights down, 
And I love it because at my church, they'll bring in like strings mm -hmm. for the Christmas Eve service. It'll be like a cello, yeah. a violinist, um, and they bring the lights on. Everyone's got the candles. And then as you, they do acapella at the end. Sleep in heavenly yeah. peace. That's the best part. And, and then maybe like the pastor will just go, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, everybody. Good night. And then joy to yeah. the world. Like that's what you all sort of like sing walking out. But yeah, I mean, it just, it captures, I think, the essence of Christmas, you know, 2000 plus years ago and this idea, because, you know, we, we've gotten so used to noise, right? With cars and helicopters sure. and planes and radios and all this sort of stuff. But like, take, take a second right now and think about how quiet that night was. Yeah. It really was a quiet night, but there was one noise that broke through that silence, and it was the crying yeah. of a baby, and that's powerful, yeah. you know, and I love it because it almost, because everyone sort of makes that decision, whether you're a church or whatever, when you're listening to that song, to sort of like just be in the moment and not be making a ton of noise, like you get a sense of just like the power of now, yeah. you know, um, and that's what that song has always done for me is it's like it's a great centering moment that brings you into the reason of the season and i feel like it's a song we should listen to more leading up to christmas eve yeah. and christmas day because you shouldn't be waiting till 11 o'clock yeah. midnight on christmas eve christmas yeah. day to get that feeling sure yeah you could do that right now do you Why know who has a, do, do you know who has a great right version now? that people should check out is boys to men Ooh. their version of silent night is beautiful yeah beautiful everyone should take a moment today whether you're listening to this on drop day, just listen to Silent Night. Maybe dim the lights in your room a little bit. Get maybe you put the kids to bed and just sit in this song and allow yourself to feel the peace of the moment. Look around your house. Look at the lights. Whatever it is, gifts under the tree. Look at your kid on the monitor as they're sleeping and just recognize all that you have to be grateful yeah. for in your life. This was a good list, everybody. I liked it. I liked this one. 10, top 10 Christmas carols and hymns. All right, folks, make sure you follow us on all the socials, rate and review. Um, what else do we need to tell them? Uh, go to youtube.com yeah. slash countdown network. Uh, we promise to have more episodes yeah. up there okay. soon. Uh, if we can get Emilio back here, yeah. we can get him to edit some more episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we want to finish this episode the way we always do, by saying a very heartfelt Merry Christmas. And Happy Holidays. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>